Hey, welcome back, everybody. I'm glad you could join us as we wrap up this series called Branded. And uh, in the past parts of this series, we looked at our our identity as God's children, right? Like being adopted into His family and and us being His sons and daughters. <clears throat> and part of being a family, sometimes, at, if you're you know a parent or when you become a parent, you'll realize that. Part of being a family, part of being a parent, means that you have to discipline sometimes, right? And, and that word discipline uh, it might scare you, but this this word discipline isn't necessarily bad, all right? It it means that it's to train or to correct or to mold uh, or perfect moral character. Okay, so it's a it's a training that corrects and molds and perfects moral character. So, like I said, that word might scare some of us and but we can all agree that getting disciplined isn't any fun like I said for for us parents we don't like disciplining our kids but it's necessary sometimes in the first part of this series we were looking at how we're God's children and as a good father sometimes he has to discipline us in order to help us grow and so tonight that's where we're going to be. Uh, go ahead and go to Hebrews chapter 12. So in Hebrews chapter 12, <clears throat> and starting in verse 3, it says, For Consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, so that you won't grow weary and give up. In struggling against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood, and you have forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons. So exhortation means... Um, basically making an urgent appeal, okay? So it says that you have forgotten this urgent appeal that addresses to you as sons. My son, do not take the Lord's discipline lightly or lose heart when you are reproved by him. That word means to be corrected. So it says, don't lose heart when you're being corrected by him. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves and, and punishes every son he receives. Endure suffering as discipline. God is dealing with you as sons, for what son is there that a father does not discipline? But if you are without discipline, which all receive, you know, one day everyone uh, will, you know, be punished in some form or fashion, uh, it says that then you are, if, if you are without discipline, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Furthermore, we had human fathers discipline us, and we respected them. Shouldn't we submit even more to the Father of Spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short for a short time based on what seemed good to them, but he does it for our benefit, so that we can share in his holiness. No discipline seems enjoyable at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. So <clears throat> let's break this down real quick, okay? Uh, the scripture, uh, the scripture doesn't make it complicated. God's discipline is proof of your relationship with Him. All right. So again, let's let's unpack that a little bit more. So if if you're a Christ follower, okay, if you're a Christ follower and you commit sin, He's going to discipline you, maybe harshly, maybe gently. Um, Maybe it's like David and, and he sends somebody to call you out. Or maybe it's like Jonah and, and you get swallowed by a well. Or maybe it's just through the Holy Spirit convicting you to repent, which we see that probably the most. He, he has to discipline because he loves you and wants what's best for you. And what's best for you is him. He's the best for you. Now, on the flip side of all of that, if you have been sinning and you haven't experienced uh, some form of discipline from God, you know, you sin and you sin and you feel no conviction, you, you feel like you've done nothing wrong, that would indicate that you really aren't a Christ follower, all right? And if you are convicted of something, whether you humbly submit or if you ignore it, one of those things will show, or both of those things say a lot about your relationship with God as well. All right? Now, discipline may not be fun, but it has a purpose. 
And God always has a purpose for the things that he does. When it comes to his discipline, his purpose is to grow us through it. See, we don't grow when we're comfortable and when things are growing great. When things are going great. That's in those moments where we're comfortable and everything's going good. That's a great time to rest. But it's in the hard times when we grow the most. God doesn't like seeing us struggle. But he knows that it's worth it if it means that we grow in our relationship with him. Plus, God loves it when we turn to him and we acknowledge him as God in our lives. See, God's ultimate goal is that we be transformed to look more like his son Jesus. And that requires discipline. Discipline creates disciples. Discipline is Remember, it's training to correct and to mold and to perfect moral character. And being a disciple means that you accept that discipline so that your goal aligns with God's for us to be transformed into looking more and more like Jesus and and spending forever with them. Discipline creates disciples. Hard times grow us more than comfortable times. Uh, If I can put it another way, um, you know, while I was putting this, this lesson together, God just kind of put this in my head, but we have these, these oak trees around our church, right? And, and they're, it's windy today and they're dropping acorns. They've been dropping acorns for a few weeks, but anyway, so we got eight, these acorns all over the place. All right. Now, while the, the acorn is attached to the tree, it's probably pretty comfy, right? But then something happens. Maybe it's a day like today where The wind is just rocking those limbs. It's shaking those trees. And this acorn that has matured and it's gotten bigger, it drops and it falls. Right? It falls to the ground. Now, left alone, nothing's really going to happen to this except for maybe we step on it and crunch it or a squirrel eats it. But if it's buried, then this, this little, this tip, this taproot starts to grow deep. Right? And then eventually, you know, this little, this little hat part comes off, but eventually a, a sprout comes from the top of it. And with some sun and some water, it grows, and it, and it grows until it looks a lot like the oak tree that it came from. But the seed has to somewhat deconstruct before it can take root and grow. It has to go through some hard times, and it has to go through some growing pains. But with the right care, it grows. See, discipline isn't fun, but it is a chance for you to shed some of those things, those things that are holding you back from from really fully going all in in your relationship with God. Discipline is a chance for you to shed those things and grow those roots deep and grow closer to God and look more and more like Jesus. Until one day when we all get to heaven and we're made complete, and we, and we look like that, that grown oak tree. You know, we look like Jesus. See, discipline from our loving God creates us to, to be disciples of his son, Jesus. Let's pray. Father God, I just want to thank you so much, God, for uh, just for protecting us through some of these storms of life. God, I... I thank you for sending your son, Jesus, for us, God, and adopting us into your family. And God, for sending the Holy Spirit to help guide us and convict us when we need it. And God, I thank you for your discipline. God, even though it's hard, I know that it has a purpose. And God, I thank you for it. God, I thank you for everything you're doing in our lives and everything you're going to do. In the name of pray. Amen. All right. I love y'all and I'll see y'all later. Bye.